And welcome back YouTube, this is Boosterboxbuster here with another video. Today I'm here to share with you my Yu-Gi-Oh! 2 inch tall minifigure series 3 collection video. These were made sometime in the year 2002 to 2004 and made by the company Mattel. This particular series has 10 minifigures that you could collect in the individual packs and one three pack that you could collect. Unfortunately, I do not own every single uh, figure from this set. I am missing the three pack and one individual figure. Uh, the individual one I am missing is Catapult Turtle, so unfortunately you will not be seeing any Catapult Turtle. And I will tell you what the three pack contains at the end of the video because I don't want to spoil the rest of the uh, collection here. Alright, so with that out of the way, I do want to say Series 3 is kind of where they started to include some of the more obscure dual monsters. Uh, they all did have anime appearances, but some of them had very brief anime appearances, like I'm talking like maybe like 30 seconds of screen time before they were gone used in one duel in the entire series. So, yeah, we're uh, we're getting into some of the more obscure monsters. Don't get me wrong, there are some iconic monsters in Series 3, but we're going to be so seeing some obscure, like, random stuff, like why would you make a miniature out of that? With that out of the way, let's get into the collection video. So first up, we do have one that I consider a much more iconic monster, and that is Saggy the Dark Clown. Now I gotta say, this is a pretty cool miniature. Unfortunately, my package is, is a bit yellowed and has some damage, but overall, uh, the plastic is pretty secure to the card, so I do consider that a bonus. Now I gotta say, they actually did a pretty good job with Saggy. Uh, his boots are really cool. He has those really weird uh, striped leggings. His face is not bad for a humanoid monster. Usually they're pretty bad, but they did a pretty good job, especially with his face paint. Of course, he has that really weird hat, and he is summoning his dark orb energy attack right up top there. I gotta say, this is one of the better miniatures out of Series 3, in my opinion. And I also love how they gave him the base to stand on, because this would not stand very well by itself without some sort of base. So that is Sagi, the Dark Clown. I just want to uh, adjust something before it becomes an issue. Okay, that should be fine. Up next... We have the Soul um, Duelist or character miniature that is not a monster from this set. And that is Grandpa. That's right. The most legendary duelist of all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Grandpa. Unfortunately, I do have some sticker residue. I have not been able to get that off yet. Uh, I, a viewer of mine did recommend a way to try to clean... Uh, sticker residue off, so I'm gonna try that later on to see if it works, and I might even do a video of that to, if it does work, to uh, just to be like a DIY easy residue remover type uh, video. But yeah, we have Grandpa here, uh, a shorter miniature as it should be. He's holding, I believe, is that the deck box, the Millennial Puzzle box. He's holding some sort of really cool Egyptian-style box there. Apologies, I do not remember what it is. Uh, unfortunately, his eyes are not painted quite right. It, one, it looks a little bit like he's kind of cross-eyed looking toward his right there. I love the hat, and the hair is not bad considering that it's a, uh, a two-inch tall miniature. I gotta say, this is not a bad humanoid, or not humanoid, a human duelist style miniature. This is one of the better ones that they've done. That is Grandpa! There you go. 
Let's see a nice close up. Uh, that's just uh, completely blinding. I'm going to try to adjust that. There we go, much better. So up next we have one of those more questionable miniatures. We have Basic Insect, one of Weevil's most powerful cards. Not really, but uh, this was a card used by Weevil. And I question as to why they made it, because it's not definitely not an iconic card. And it's definitely a... Uh, uh, you know, it, it's a bug. It, it's, it's a giant insect. It's a giant bug, you know. I don't know if, you, if this is more like Grasshopper or a Praying Mantis style bug, but it's kind of cool. It has eight nipples, as you can see. Eight studded nipples right there. Doo, 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 doo. Um, I gotta say, it for being a basic insect, you know, a, a much less popular type of card, they did a pretty good job with the miniature. It has the grooves on the feet. It has the uh, the large, you know, squishable body of an in, of an insect. A pretty cool, almost ant-like head. I gotta say, it's it's not bad for being such a questionable miniature. It's pretty good. They did a good job. All right. And then up next we have. In my opinion, one of the best miniatures from the set. The Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. The three-headed Blue Eyes. This is, of course, one of Kaiba's most memorable summonings from the entire anime, in my opinion. And it is so awesome. You got the three heads. I, I understand it's very like mono color you know blue and white and then of course you have the uh, inside of the mouth on the open one up there really cool looking by the way i gotta say they did a good job i always thought the blue eyes was a little bit more just a little bit more of a whitish tone but other than that i, I believe this is a really cool miniature um and an iconic staple in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh. Alright, and now we're going back to more of a questionable miniature, although I can understand this one more than Basic Insect, but still, it's still more of a, uh, mm. and that is the Mammoth Graveyard. Now, this was used, I believe, in the anime by Yugi, where he fused it with the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon to create, like, a self-poisoning destructive type thing, and it... I, I don't think they ever released a card like that where you could attach it, where you could fuse it with another monster and it slowly, like, saps the life out of it. Once again, that that's the anime rules of Yu-Gi-Oh. But the miniature itself is pretty, honestly, not bad. You have the very long legs of a mammoth. You got the really cool rib cage up here, which unfortunately is completely stilled around instead of being open. But I understand why they did that because that would uh, cause a lot, lot of easy breakage. You have the uh, face right there, which actually looks pretty good. I'm not gonna lie; it feels like it's kind of squished. I, I wish I would have did it in a larger packaging, like the basic insect, and gave it a bit more room to breathe, like a bit more of a menacing foreboding type pose but uh, for what they made i'm gonna say it's not bad it's definitely not the best miniature of the set that's for sure it's kind of around the middle but it's definitely not bad i gotta say they did a halfway decent job with it that is the mammoth graveyard trying to get it where it's not blinding the light here it's, okay that's fine no it's not it's going to tip over okay that's good 
And we're going back to more of the iconic style miniatures here. We got Baby Dragon. Now Baby Dragon is of course uh, a Joey staple. You fuse it with Time Wizard to make Thousand Dragon. Um, definitely an iconic card in my opinion. Well, maybe not, I don't know what I call it. Yeah, yeah, I call it iconic because, you know, you fuse it with the Time Wizard to make the Thousand Dragon. Very cool. Or in Yugi's anime case, it's, you activate Time Roulette and <laughs> see if it fuses or not. I gotta say, the miniature itself is pretty good. You got the wings, the really cool eyes, which actually look really good here. They are well painted. You got the open face and the feet. I I, I like the sitting down pose. They did a pretty good job with this miniature. Pro I like it much better than Mammoth Graveyard, that's for sure. But yeah, that is Baby Dragon. Up next, we have Winged Dragon, Guardian of the Fortress number one. Now, is this the Winged Dragon? Is this... Now, how, that number one always confused me. Is it saying that it's the Guardian of the first fortress, or is it saying that this is the first Guardian of the fortress? I'm not going to lie, this is probably one of my... Uh, lesser favorite miniatures. I'm not a huge fan of this one. I've never been a huge fan of the Wing Guardian design in general, where it has the hand sticking out of the wings up there. That that's just weird. Um, the face itself is not bad, but the uh, they overdid it with the red. It <laughs> it's like its lip is pulled back, and you're seeing the exposed. Uh, like gum line of the dragon that's kind of weird in my opinion <laughs> the eyes are actually well painted though I do like that and the uh, feet itself are pretty good now I never had a loose one of these so this miniature is probably not gonna it doesn't look like it's gonna stand up very well it's probably looks like it's gonna fall over quite a bit I gotta say, overall, this is probably one of my least favorite miniatures from this set. And it's such an obscure card, too. It appeared in the anime for, like, 20 seconds. I think this was in, this was in one of the very first uh, animated duels in the show that they ever shown. Just a very obscure monster to make a miniature of. Alright. So... Up next, we got the Giant Soldier of Stone, a classic Yu-Gi-Oh! monster. Pierce the Moon, Giant Soldier of Stone. I'm not going to lie, this, this miniature, though, does not really represent the Giant Soldier of Stone well. Um, it looks very stiff, but I, I guess the Giant Soldier itself is stiff, so I can't really complain about that too much but just something about it just looks off like the this giant stone stone sword that he's withdrawing right here just looks a bit weird um the eyes itself are the eyes are cool it looks like the green glowing eyes there if you guys can see that please focus okay the hand going back there i, I kind of find that a bit weird in my opinion it looks like he's lunging forward for an attack, but I don't think the giant soldier can really lunge. He's more of a defensive monster. Um, this miniature would probably not stand very well either because of that particular pose. I'm not going to lie. Just something is a bit off about this miniature. You know, it, it feels... I, I think the big thing is it just feels small. In the anime... This is a giant monster. I mean, this is this is this is foreboding, but I mean, it, it's here. It's just so puny compared to 
you know, Winged Dragon, Guardian of the Fortress, or even Baby Dragon looks kind of small. I don't know. Just something about this just feels off to me. That is the giant soldier of stone. So, we have arrived at the final miniature to showcase. And that is one of my favorite ones of the set, even though it's an obscure monster. We have Pendulum Machine. And I gotta say, this thing is so cool. I love the giant pendulum. The arms coming out the side there to keep it, uh, like, to hold it up is really cool. That face with the little beady eyes right there, that's awesome. And I love the little uh, giant almost Dr. Robotnik style helmet that it's wearing. And of course the little gears at, for the shoulders, that's awesome too. This is just such a cool miniature. I absolutely love this. By far my favorite miniature from set 3. And that is Pendulum Machine. By the way, I believe this was used by Bandit Keith if my memory serves me correctly. I love that giant. The giant pendulum just sells it for me. As a pendulum machine should have a giant pendulum, it is not false advertising right here. <clears throat> so, that is Series 3. Of course, I am missing uh, Catapult Turtle. Unfortunately, that I, I have been looking a long time for a sealed Catapult Turtle. And I have not been able to find one. If anybody has a sealed catapult turtle, please let me know. I would definitely be willing to buy that from you. Uh, the other thing I'm missing, which is still available, I just have not gotten around to purchasing it yet, is the Series 3 3 pack, which contains. Let me show you the miniatures that it contains. I'm gonna kind of just peel these aside here for a second. So the three pack contains a mammoth graveyard, just like this, a winged dragon guardian of the fortress, and a grandpa. Now the grandpa in the three pack is not a standard paint job like these two are in the three pack, but it's like a really cool tra translucent uh, bluish green that almost looks ghostly. It's like you're talking to Grandpa's ghost. It's pretty cool. So just imagine that in the three pack. That is what the three pack in series three looks like and I gotta say it's a pretty cool three pack. If you can get it I highly suggest doing so if you don't mind like a Grandpa repaint. If you don't like repaints then just go with the standard ones. Now, in my opinion, uh, the one, I I'm going to speculate here, just like I did in Series 2. I think the most desirable miniature from Series 3, in the long run, is not going to be Catapult Turtle, I think. It, a Catapult Turtle is going to be one of the, probably like, top two or three, but I don't think it's going to be number one. I believe the number one most desirable miniature in the long run from set 3 is going to be Blue Eyes White Dragon and that's just because Blue Eyes itself is such an iconic monster. I believe Catapult Turtle is going to be the second most desirable in the long run just because it's stupid hard to find right now. And I believe uh if I had to choose a third one to round out the top three, that's kind of hard to say. Honestly, I'd probably say it's between us. I'd probably say either Pendulum. Yeah, I'm going to go with Pendulum Machine just because it's such a cool monster. I might be speaking biased here, but that's my opinion. Top three most desirable, I believe it's going to be Louis Ultimate Dragon, Catapult Turtle, and Pendulum Machine. But that, at the end of the day, that's just my opinion. 
please let me know in the comments down below what your favorite miniature was from this set. If it's Catapult Turtle, let me know, because, hey, I understand. It, it looks like a cool miniature, I just am not fortunate enough to have one. And also in the comments down below, let me know what you think of this series, if you think I should continue, or if, if you think it's just a waste of time. Until next time, this has been Booster Max Buster. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you want to see future content like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to check out a past video, it should be popping up right about now. With all that said, this has been Booster Box Buster, and I'm signing out. Peace.